Chapter 5 Jesus is Coming Back Simon Peter had run behind the other disciple. When Peter arrived, he went into the tomb. He saw the long pieces of linen cloth that were lying there. Also, he saw the piece of napkin that had been round Jesus' head. This was not in the same place as the other pieces of linen cloth. Someone had put it carefully in a separate place. John 20, verse 6-7 After Jesus Christ was embalmed like every dead person, he was wrapped with white linen cloth from his neck down to his feet. Then a small piece of napkin was used to wrap his head. When Peter heard of his resurrection on the third day, he rushed to the tomb as his legs would carry him to witness of this great news. When he got there, indeed, Jesus Christ had risen from the tomb. The King of Glory had defeated death. Death could not hold him down. Amidst the joy of this great event, John was careful to record something significant they spotted in the empty tomb. They saw the long linen cloth of Jesus Christ thrown somewhere on the floor. But the napkin that covered his head was carefully folded and put in a decent and separate place. Beloved, this surely must ring a bell in your ears. What message was the Master conveying to us? The Master's action has strong correlation with the Jewish custom. In this custom, any time a Master was served by a servant, it was mandatory for the servant to keep himself out of sight, but should not go unnecessarily far from where the Master was eating. When the master finished eating, he would cling his hands, mouth and beard with a napkin, wet up the napkin and toss it to the table. Then the servant will now run towards the table and clear it up because in those days, the wetted napkin meant I am done. On the other hand, however, if the master gets up from the table, folds the napkin and lays it nicely beside the plate, the servants will dare not clear the table because the folded napkin meant I am coming back. This is the revelation when Jesus folded the napkin before leaving the tomb. He was saying to us that he will come back again. He is not done with the business of his father. He will work with us even from the corridors of heaven and finally rapture us into this place of glory. This is to confirm his promise that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Matthew 28 verse 20 these are evidences that our Lord has not retired from his father's business. He didn't wet up the napkin. He folded it. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Mark 16 verse 20. Jesus will come back again and rapture his church away. Will you be a part of this? When he is finally joined to his bride, that is the church, at the last marriage supper, he will wet up the napkin and toss it on the great supper table because his bride would have finally left the world and what will be left of this earth will be its destruction. With the napkin folded, his grace is available to save. Don't die in your sins. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior for his glorious light to shine upon you and in you. A life without Christ will end up in crisis. Having material possession or a good heart can't save you. You need Jesus to be saved. A young man once told me as I embarked on a personal evangelism that he doesn't need Jesus to go to heaven. His good deeds would take him there. My response was simple. God is pleased with the goodness that is through Christ and not outside him. Confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and believe in your heart that he rose from the dead. His blood will cleanse you from all sins and you will be saved. Yes, it is as simple as that. He will make you a new creature. All things will pass away and all things will become new for you. It is a brand new life, which you will forever enjoy. A life of purity, divine health, power, glory, excellence and prosperity. Christ died bearing all the sins of the whole world on himself but resurrected so pure that he forbade Mary Madeline from touching him because he had not yet ascended to the Father. The resurrection life is a new life of total purity and consecration to the Father. Prophetically, it is all about refusing a touch from the world in order to have a touch from God. It means living like a saint and not a world star.